seen videos in the past about how to transfer toner from a laser jet printer over to wood and metal and other materials. So I decided that I could probably find some uses for that in rod building. And one of the things I'd planned on doing was making some butt caps with my logos on the back of it using this toner transfer method. And I was planning on doing a video about making your own butt caps out of wood and just including that in that video. I thought it might be a better idea to do a separate video for the toner transfer process. I experimented with several different methods and had mixed results. I've tried using parchment paper, wax paper, transfer paper, and had mixed results. A lot of it has to do with your printer itself. Some types of paper work better with certain printers than others. But the method I'm going to show you should work with just about any toner based printer because it just uses plain paper. One thing you will have to do when you print your image out is mirror the image. Use whatever printing program you're using or photo editing program you need to use. They all have some sort of way to invert the image, flip it, mirror it, flip it horizontally. You'll just have to experiment with whatever you're using to either print or edit your photos or your graphics in order to get your image mirrored because you, you have to have it backwards in order for this to work. And I know that laser printers are not the cheapest thing in the world I own three of them and I bought all three of them used at thrift stores and I've got less than $20 tied up in all of them put together and they all had perfectly usable drum units with plenty of toner still in the cartridges so if you're on a, a budget and you feel like this is something you want to do check out your thrift stores and and see what they have around there because a lot of times I'll pick them up for less than five dollars a piece okay what we're gonna use here is a heat gun some acetone of course, what I'm going to transfer my image to, some Mod Podge. This is the Mod Podge Glossy. You can pick this up at most Walmart or craft stores. It's very inexpensive. And I'm using a Sharpie also. And I removed the print from the Sharpie using some acetone and a paper towel just so it doesn't get on my wood. And I'm also using a single-sided razor blade. So I've got my image cut out and I've cut close to the image. I've cut close. That way there's less paper left on the wood when I get done with it. If you start out with less, you got less to remove. What we're gonna be doing is sticking the image to the wood using some Mod Podge. Again, this is the gloss, and I'm just using my finger to wipe on the Mod Podge onto the wood. And I'm putting it on fairly thick, not too bad, but you know, a fairly even, fairly thick coat. I'm gonna coat the wood and then I'm going to also coat my image in the Mod Podge. You just want to take your time and make sure you get every bit of it coated. And this will work almost like a contact cement. I'm going to have some on each surface. And then I'm going to put the two surfaces together. And while it's wet, you can move it around a little bit until you get it positioned where you want it. Once you get it where you want it, just stick it down. Press it down with your fingers. Use a little pressure. Make sure you don't have any wrinkles in your paper. And then I'm just going to take that Sharpie and mash it down pretty good with that Sharpie. Just kind of burnish the paper into the Mod Podge. I just want to make sure I get a really good bond between the toner and the first little bit of paper there on the bottom. And you're going to get a little Mod Podge on the back of your paper. That's okay. Just smooth it out. Get everything nice and flat. Make sure you're going to get a good adhesion between the two surfaces and give it a, a good burnishing. I'm using a heat gun here to heat this up. You don't have to do that, but I did that in order to speed this process up for the video. You can just let it dry for a few hours until it's not sticky to your fingers. You don't feel any moisture on it. Once everything's dry to the touch, you're going to move on to the next step i just take a piece of paper towel and wet it with acetone and let it dry acetone dries really fast in room temperature let it dry a little bit and go ahead and put that on the logo and the wood together i think what the acetone does in this process is it kind of reactivates the mod podge a little bit and also it reacts with the toner and helps it stick to the mod podge now i'm just going to peel that back after it's set for just a second there and as you can see it's made that mod podge sticky again i'm just going to go ahead and hit that with the heat gun to dry it just a little bit i don't want it wet from the mod podge as i'm doing this i want to make sure that's real good and dry now i'm just going to take a razor blade a single sided razor blade and scrape the back of that paper a little bit just just enough to kind of scratch the 
very top surface of that paper off a little bit and that's going to help us out in the next step i found that this works pretty well for what i'm doing here i've tried with doing this step and without and i seem to get better results when i just lightly scrape the back side of that paper before i begin removing the paper now i'm just wetting my finger with plain water and wiping it on the back of the paper there i'm just gently rubbing on the paper and kind of rolling it around into little balls and into little rolls of paper and what we're trying to do here is remove the majority of that paper from this image you won't get every bit of it but you can get the majority of it off of there and once you get most of the paper off of it it'll look a little hazy like it's not exactly how you want it of course it's dry but that haziness is really just a thin layer of paper that's still left behind i'm just going to use a little rubbing alcohol to wipe on that because as most people who do rod building know a little rubbing alcohol on something will show what it looks like once you get epoxy on it and that's what you'll be looking at when you get a layer of epoxy on this logo it'll clean it up quite a bit and what little papers left will go transparent and all you're left with really looking at is the logo itself so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll talk to y'all later